as you move out of Egypt into what we now call Libya, uh, you are now into Babel territory, the Berbers. The Berbers, of course, have been the dominant people in this part of Africa for several thousand years. And of course, when the Muslim armies came, the Muslims encountered the Berbers who had their own religions, but many of the Berbers have been exposed to Christianity for several centuries and were Christians. They were also Jews living in that part of the continent. Now, gradually, many of these Berbers were converted to Islam. We are told by Ibn Khaldun that the Berbers apostated 12 times before they reconciled themselves with Islam. So it was a long time before they were really Muslims. But then gradually Islam spread among the Berbers and many of these Christian Berbers or animist Berbers became Muslims. And of course the Arabs were able to establish a culture and a civilization in North Africa which gradually absorb many of these people. Now, one thing that the Arabs have in common with the Romans, and this is what differentiates these two empire builders from all the other empire builders, is that like the Romans, when they went to areas, they married the local women. And, uh, and this way, gradually, they were able to penetrate and get these societies under their control. And this is very effective in areas where you have matrilineality because it's very easy for the invading power to marry into royal families. And in the second, third generation, they'll take over the, 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 these families. The British never did that when they went to other areas. They deliberately stay away from the locals. So this is one big, <laughs> big, big difference between the British and the Romans and the Arabs. I mean, this is one of the uh, uh, differences between the, uh, the civilizations. So as the, 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 the Arabs be, uh, succeeded in establishing themselves in North Africa, many of these Berber families became assimilated into Arab culture and they gradually took on Arab names. And that's one reason why when you go to North Africa today, many of those North Africans like Muammar Gaddafi and Bouteflika and others will tell you they are Arabs. You know that after a thousand years, they have been mixed up with uh, Arab blood and, and Berber blood. I mean, the language of the Berbers have remained, but I doubt very much whether you genuinely have any Berber who can really claim that he is Berber 100%. They have been mixing. And of course, you have a lot of invaders who came from uh, Europe and uh, other parts of the region, Turks, Circassians, and all those groups mixing and intermarrying with them. But the illusion of being an Arab and Berber continues in that region up to the present time. The point I'm trying to make really is that uh, as the, uh, the, the, the Islamic culture spread in North Africa and the people in that part of the world were exposed to Islam, two processes took place in that region. One was Arabization, the other one was Islamization. Now, the Islamization process became very advanced in North Africa from Egypt all the way up to what we now call Morocco. Now, it took many centuries for the Muslim armies to spread across North Africa. It was not a generational. It was several generations before Islam really moved from the east, meaning Egypt in this case, all the way to the Maghreb meaning Morocco and Al Jazeera, Algeria and all those places. Now, the Arabization process also took time because linguistic expansion doesn't take place in one generation. It took many centuries for Arabic to become dominant in North Africa. Now, while this thing was going on, 